Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. What I'm showing you is just some sort of a messy collage of my entire bikini collection. Well actually that's not quite accurate because um, the nicest and most comfy ones are in pieces. And when I say in pieces, I don't mean that they're shredded up. I mean, I only have parts of things that are, the matching sets are all jumbled up, if you know what I mean. Um, a couple are entirely gone. I don't know how that happened. Um, but the bikini in question um, uh, that I speak about for tonight's story time is for very obvious and apparent reasons, as you'll see, um, not in my possession anymore. So um, anyway, we'll get to that in a few minutes. I'm just gonna finish showing you my bikini collection. And these are all the entire sets that I used to wear uh, on the beach. Most, I wouldn't wear these basically out on the street maybe in the lobby or by the pool, uh, that's about it. Um, but I, you know, I could never resist a, a pretty bathing suit. And um, I, I bought all these little, you know, these little pieces that went with it. And I, I really, you can see my favorite colors, what they actually were. And, um, you know, it's, I love bright colors. And um, I really, I really think they're so cute. I, I know that a lot of them are skimpy. Most of them guys are a size eight. A couple are a size 10 because as I got bigger, you know, I moved on to a slightly larger size. And, um, but you know, I, I would say that after my mom and I sold our beach house, I, I never had the inclination to wear them anymore. It was, that chapter of my life was gone and it really brought me a lot of pain to go, to even think of going to another beach resort after that and putting on these same bathing suits or any different one for that matter. So, um, you know, I, I never, I had one entire one piece, but I just never, I, I used to swim in it, and that would be about it. These were for lounging around in the sun and in the shade. And I would, never, like I said, I would never wear these out in public, and I would never wear the bikini top to a restaurant. The way I saw some women, and I don't care whether they did or not, but these were my absolute favorite, the little briefs. And actually, I had four more sets like that, and they were all gone. They were all taken, and I believe I lost, probably lost some of the luggage on the way back after we sold the condo, or I, I left them there, and I, when I went back, they were gone. You know what I'm saying. Um, so, these, this is my entire collection, and I also want to show you the hot pink outfit that I'm talking about in the video. And I don't know why it's so important that I show you this, but isn't it divine? This is the hot pink outfit that I put on to go to the nightclub by myself. And I, it, I loved it because it didn't wrinkle and it's, it's very stretchy and I love the shape of it. It was short and I wore a little tube top, a little pink striped tube, tube top with it. Um, always, almost always, and um, I no longer have that, but that's my most 90s outfit. I love it. Isn't it cute? Anyway, guys, on to the story time. So, over the years, you know, um, 
after cleaning out all my vintage um, bikini bathing suits, um, over the years, as I was saying, for one reason or another, a few of them have gone missing. Um, some fell apart, um, some got lost or even stolen. Others I had to give away. And um, everybody did love the bikinis that I did keep and wear, and, but nobody loved them as much as I did. And as they aged, um, the material became very soft and mellowed. Um, and in my case, the, probably it was a sea salt that did that. Um, they began to feel as comfortable as an old pair of faded jeans. And um, the ocean I refer to in this story is, the, um, is near Parque Papagayo, uh, a, a very beautiful spot. And it's located by the Pacific Ocean in what is now known to be one of the deadliest cities in the world. Um, on planet Earth, actually. And it is also the old stomping ground of the ancient Olmec tribe. And so, um, little did I know, in the future, I would move into a luxurious personal property there with my parents and uh, with a great many other families that we were familiar with at the time. And, um, but that year, um, my parents and I did rent out uh, a beach rental, a beach house right by the ocean. And, um, but we rented out two suites. And the reason for that is because um, I, I guess I was on a little brief break. It was winter time and we were still living at my house, at my old house. And um, I, I was just about to enter postgraduate school. I, I think it must have been about two years before that would have put me at about 25, 26. I'm not sure I remember exactly how, when it was. But I, I remember it was quite some time after I met my, uh, my friend. My friend would be traveling with us. And um, I, I think that a lot of you know him from another story time as Richard. And I just want to, uh, you know, I just want to take a second to tell you that um, I've got notes here. I, I wanted to tell you that this was a time during which I still really had high hopes for this um, person uh, in the relationship that I had with this person. It was still just a friendship, but um, actually, you know, um, I was still not disillusioned. I think maybe this vacation that we took with him did something, did something, and um, it didn't go all the way it didn't go as well as it should have. Let's just put it that way. And um, so that was one interesting part about it. And the other interesting thing was that um, it was this journey that we were going to take was supposed to be, um, you know, uh, an adventure come true for Richard. And, um, you know, it was a real first for him. Which, um, you know, you, just like what happened with my friend Isabel when she came with me, and I didn't really get that much into it with Isabel. I didn't explain everything that happened uh, to her on that trip, but um, I, I had met her a couple of years after this story. So, um, you know, um, for him, for Richard, this turned into a veritable nightmare. Um, and that would be because of his delicate health. And as I was mentioning in the other story time, Richard, my friend Richard, who was then around his 30s, um, or very close to 30, I'm sure he was in his 30s, um, he had had a horrible motorcycle accident when he was a teenager, and it took part of his stomach, so he had a very delicate health. And now, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, he was under doctor's care, but um, we decided, and 
as the story goes on, I'll explain to you that it would be fine for Richard to come away for one week uh, with us. I would be staying on longer than him with my parents, and he would be returning after a week. And so, well, um, the other thing that I didn't know at the time was that Richard was indeed struggling with many more personal issues besides his health. And um, uh, I was struggling with some issues as well, but not as serious as the ones that Richard faced. So anyway, on to the story and um, on to the scandal, or at least one of them, <laughs> because it was scandalous. And so um, I remember the trip over as being so horrible, guys, so horrible. Um, it was very, very long. It was, I don't know if anybody remembers when the charters used to get over to all these tropical places in a matter of three hours, four hours. Well, this is um, not one of them. I, it was not one of them. I can't remember if it was a charter or just some other direct flight. I, I, it was too long ago. But I remember that the passengers, um, my goodness, they almost went out of their way to be so nasty with us. And so, um, with me particularly, uh, it was, um, you know, it was not a good trip over. And so, um, I remember once we arrived, Richard was very um, irritable and he was exhausted. And so was my mother. And we all stood under this tree waiting for the shuttle to come and take us to the um, apartment rental, the beach rental. And um, I remember there were all these bats, you know, it was, a, it was dark. It was about, it had to have been after 6 p.m. because that's when it gets dark over there in the winter time. So I remember saying, don't worry, don't look up there. <laughs> don't worry about the bats. Everything will seem much better in the, uh, in the morning with the sun and the beach and the ocean and everything. Um, so anyway, I, I reassured him that everything would be okay. And um, so he was pretty tired, but I, on the other hand, was full of energy and pep. And I was anxious, I was very anxious to shower and um, head to the dance floor. <laughs> That's all I, I really cared about when I traveled over there. I, I loved the nightclub and I loved the dance floor, I loved the music. And so, yeah, I was very nervous for Richard because, because of his delicate health. And I was on extreme edge, even though I had, you know, when we booked the trip, I had brushed off his insecurities um, and we talked about it and he was under doctor's care. I I'd still felt a little uneasy and helpless because if anything happened, I don't know what we would have done. I, I didn't know how to predict the situation. And so, you know, um, I, I, you know, when we booked the trip, I, it, it was, I had the premonition that I should not be traveling with my parents, but I should be staying home safe and sound with Richard. So, <laughs> um, because in not so many words, Richard resented my traveling, especially with my parents, because when I went away with them, I didn't have a care in the world. I, I felt safe. I was, you know, I was on um, very protected uh, grounds. I, I could do whatever I wished. And I, you know, I was so comfortable with my parents. And um, so I, I was feeling a lot of guilt, and I, I kept thinking to myself, maybe I shouldn't have come, maybe I should have stayed home, and maybe Richard and I should have stayed home, but that thought just did not appeal to me at all. So on the plane we went, and um, you know, I skipping the trip to me was completely out of the question, but that guilt should have given me the premonition that I needed. Um, that to tell me that the trip would um, would be like a, a trip that I never taken before, a trip like no other. And, um, you know, 
it would probably turn into something else, and it did. And um, soon I began to regret, little by little, I began to regret that we did come away. And um, it was really, guys, it was, it was such a letdown. Anyway, I'll explain what happened. And um, in the meantime, you know, as soon as we arrived at the suites, I unpacked and I laid out the pink outfit that I showed you. And um, I, I uh, headed for my shower. And Richard, instead, he fell fast asleep on the bed. Uh, there were two beds, by the way. And um, so I... I vaguely remember this. It was a long time ago. My memory is hazy, but I do remember saying something to him like, uh, how are you going to have dinner, you know, if you're going to be sleeping? I, I didn't know if I should leave him alone. I, I was kind of afraid that if he got sick, I would, you know, I would be out and not be able to help him. But he said, no, no, I'm fine. I'm not hungry. I want to sleep. You go. So out to dinner, I went with my parents, and um, I, after that, I dropped into the nightclub to say hello to my friends who uh, worked in the nightclub. They, um, you know, the manager and some of the guys that did promotions for my father's tour company locally, and so um, they all worked in the nightclubs. Um, the dance music uh, really refreshed me. Um, I, you know, I remember staying not too long, but just enough to have a, a, a nice little break. And I wasn't jet lag at all. And um, I returned to our suite feeling really, you know, happy and refreshed and, you know, very excited to start the day um, the next day. And so, um, okay, that went fine. The first night went fine. <laughs> So um, the days went there, uh, the days there went well enough. And so, you know, but the evenings were another matter. And um, it surprises me how well I can remember um, the trip with my first boyfriend there. But um, this one with Richard, it still completely, almost completely evades my memory, almost. <laughs> Um, I do remember having some very polite arguments uh, with him um, in order to try to resolve the issue of his not wanting to socialize. I remember going away with someone else um, when I was a teenager and they did the same thing. Um, it was a girl uh, and um, she was a family member and she did the same thing. She did the same thing. I, I found it very weird. Why do you want to come away if you're just going to sit in your room all the time? I don't, I don't understand. That would be very depressing for me. So anyway, um, you know, uh, he, he was very reluctant and almost, you know, I, I thought that I would cease to exist, and I almost did. So um, we opted for very low-key activities in the evening like first dinner with my parents and then maybe a walk or out with some friends at another hotel to say hello or um, maybe the flea market my parents and I love the flea markets or a uh, mini golf but you know I thought to myself I can play mini golf and go to a flea market at home I mean <laughs> I, you know, he knew that I wanted to go to the nightclub a couple of times. That's it. A couple of times. I had really gotten fond of nightclubs. I remember when I went with my first boyfriend, I couldn't have cared less about them. But uh, they, began, they began to be so interesting and fascinating to me. The music. I love the music. And so, um, you know, I... Uh, I really got depressed, guys, and I really got bored, and with all the time that I had on my hand, I guess, you know, sitting in the shade or in the sun during the day, I, I began to realize that we were not the, um, the perfect match that I once thought we were. And so this really, 
you know, it gave me a lot of heartache because I was at that point still very attached to this person. And I had a particular idea about the way that he was. And it wasn't the way, <laughs> I found out that it wasn't the way that he was. It was the way that I didn't want him to be. Um, it was really a little bit, you know, a little bit shocking. But let's get on with the story. So um, then, you know, a few nights passed. And one evening, which was almost close to the end of Richard's stay with us on the trip, um, he finally relented. And after we went out to have dinner with my parents, he came to a nightclub with me. And um, I remember introducing him to my friends who worked there. And um, we sat a while. He and I sat a while. There was music playing. And uh, I, I think I remember that they were playing some Michael Jackson. And Richard was avid about Michael Jackson. And I was too. I love Michael. I still do. I love Michael Jackson. And so did he. And I think that's how we struck up our first few conversations talking about Michael Jackson. So um, I remember they played a, a couple of his songs. And then um, Richard really wasn't talking much. He was just sitting there. I think he had a drink. I had a drink. They were sitting on the table. And then, guys, and I think my friends, you know, arranged this. A, a familiar guy came up and said hello, and he asked me to dance. I remember talking to him the year before. I remember his face, and he remembered me, and he knew who I was. So, um, you know, he asked me to dance. It was a it was a fast dance, not a slow one. And of course, I shouldn't have done it, but I jumped at the chance. And so, um, you know. I wanted to dance. It just seems that I only existed there for the nightclubs and the music and the dance floor. So that night, I recall that the music had included, um, you know, besides Michael Jackson, it was stuff like David Bowie, Taylor Dane, Whitney Houston, um, Boy George, and Madonna. Madonna, even back then, Madonna, she's still one of my favorites. And so, but not even the music could really drag Richard out of his shell. So um, anyway, I, I just, it was a very depressing and disappointing evening. So um, anyway, when the song was over and I headed back to the table, just in time to see Richard spring to his feet and uh, make his way out the door like a lightning bolt. And he said, see ya, I'm tired. And I said, okay, see ya. And I just, you know, I, I sensed it was a ploy to get me to go after him, but I resisted the temptation to run after him and say, what's wrong, don't go, let me come with you. I, I wouldn't do that because, you know, guys, um, we weren't there long. Uh, maybe something happened. If something happened, he didn't say anything. But, um, you know, I, I was devastated, but I stayed. And I had fun with some new friends that I met from my home city that night. I didn't stay long. Um, it wasn't late when I got back. But um, now, looking back at it, guys, um, I am convinced that, um, you know, I, I have a feeling that it may have been a developing his developing addiction because when when I first met him he didn't do stuff like this he was a totally different person so I don't know if it was something else that was bothering him but I know that his addiction was beginning to develop and so um, I you know I just I don't know I um, I didn't know what to think anymore. And the next morning was kind of awkward. Uh, it was the last day of Richard's stay there, and um, he would be leaving the following morning. So very early. And um, so what I did, guys, the night before was, um, I don't know if I left a note for him or I told him 
I can't recall, but I remember going back to sleep in my parents' suite and I didn't go back with Richard because it just felt too awkward. And I, I, I was really miffed. I remember my friends looking at him when he bolted out of the nightclub and looking at him as though they realized something was very wrong. And um, I, what did they know? What did they know? Um, so the next day, the last day, um, I remember I was barely speaking, you know, to Richard. I, I, I was, you know, standoffish and cool. And, uh, but by mid-afternoon, we had made up. And so I remember my mother was on the beach and she was going to watch this whole episode. And so, um, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I think my father was playing boche with some of his friends. He had tons of friends there. Or maybe he was playing tennis, one or the other. And um, so what happened was Richard and I decided to go for a swim in the ocean. Okay. So um, it was not long before a, a big strong wave came along and kind of knocked me over a little. And I felt my bikini top starting to tug and slip down. And so, um, guys, I was a size six. Whatever came off me would have revealed everything all at once. So I'm just telling you, um, you know, uh, I screamed. I screamed for Richard. I, I, ha I held it up. It didn't come off. I held it up like that and I was waving. And so he came to my rescue and he tied it up. I pointed, I said, please tie it up. And he tied it up, or so I thought he did. So, um, you know, uh, my situation, you know, if you know, if you've been in this situation, you might know how these things can tend to go. So, okay, and I go back into the ocean, this time much braver. Um, I don't know what was wrong with that bathing suit. I guess it was not my favorite and it wasn't the kind of bikini that you can move around in freely. It was like really not not well made. Let's put it that way. So um, I remember it was a teal blue. I didn't even like the color on me. I love teal blue, but I didn't like the color on me. Um, I don't know what it was about that bathing suit. But anyway, I no longer have it, guys. I no longer have it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I stood up in the water and I began to brace myself for the next wave and I, I remember I was saying something to Richard I don't remember exactly what and um, over my shoulder I, um, I saw these two I don't know guys men heading over in my direction and I thought at the time that they had two of the silliest expressions on their faces. You can imagine. Um, so I, I couldn't understand why they, they were behaving very strangely, guys. Very strangely. And so was Richard. And um, if I had just thought to look over at my mother, I think I would could have avoided this. But I, even by then, it was too late. So um, I remember looking down in the water and what did I see? What do you think I saw? If you guess my bikini top, you guessed it right. So it was bobbing along nice and slowly. And I screamed again. I mean, <laughs> I eeped. And I remember going like this, hunching over and grabbing, plucking it out before it could just, you know, slink away again. And um, I remember with the bikini top in my hand, <laughs> thank God, waving at him and screaming. You were supposed to, you know, you were supposed to tie it. And, you know, I was livid. I was livid. And what did he do, guys? What did he do? He stood there. He just stood there laughing, laughing. I said, you were supposed to tie it. Why didn't you tie it? Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> Oh God, 
you know, from then on, throughout the pool area and the lobby area and other common areas like elevators and the bar, I was catcalled and applauded. And my mother, who had seen the whole entire scene from the beach, came rushing over. And for her to get up off the chair in the heat, it must have taken a lot for her to rush over like that. But if there's anybody you can trust to tie up your bikini top properly, it would be your mama. So um, I, she rushed over. And I remember, guys, feeling so ashamed at his behavior in front of my mother. If my father was around, I must have blocked it out. <laughs> I must have blocked it out. And I remember being in tears. I was in tears. And thinking, I wish that my first boyfriend was there right then instead of him. And that really made me cry. That really made me cry. So, um, you know, I, I was very ashamed of his unbecoming behavior. So, um, you know, that, that was a complete fiasco. And so, again, I stopped speaking to Richard. And I did not like him very much from then on. It became quite difficult for me to remain friends with him. And um, it was a real struggle. And that, of course, affected the last night there. And so um, I remember us going out to dinner. And I managed to put it past me, behind me, and try to remain civil. And um, so we all dined together, and I remember being very relieved that my time with Richard alone, at least, uh, on the trip, came, was coming to an end. And so, um, you know, I don't remember exactly what we were planning to do after dinner, if we had plans, but I remember uh, maybe we went to have a drink somewhere or... Maybe we sat in all. I don't remember, guys. I don't remember. I blocked it out. I don't want to know. I don't want to remember. But I do remember cutting it short. I cut it short. And um, I just it wasn't in the mood to go out and have fun. I, I wasn't. And so I returned to the suite on my own, to my parents. And um, Richard, on the other hand, had made plans to live it up. And man, was he happy that night. Uh, I had misgivings about those plans that he made, but um, I didn't say anything. I, I just kept quiet and, um, you know, let him go about whatever he wanted to do. And so, um, you know, it. I always had the idea. I always had the idea that later Richard got sick on something that he ate. Although none of us got sick, my mother, my father, or myself, I believe that he probably ate something afterwards, after we all left. And I, I think that he probably had a, a, a drink or two or something. But, um, you know, uh, Richard became very, very ill. Between, between the time that I left him and the time that he traveled home to Canada, he became gravely ill. And, um, you know, he fell asleep. He allegedly fell asleep in public. And um, he woke up. And when he did wake up, he found that his shoes were missing. So he had to hurry and buy shoes. That's typical. That's typical for over there. You know, if somebody doesn't like you, they'll take your shoes. Um, so um, I, I think... What must have happened was that either um, he was roofied or too ashamed to tell me what really happened, and he blacked out. And so, um, you know, I, I never did understand exactly what happened or how it happened, um, but um, I do suspect a nightclub associate <laughs> who might have not liked what they saw in Richard um, God knows what they knew. God knows what they had seen. I don't know, guys. I don't know, but this something was wrong. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, none of it should have happened. Of course, none of it, none of nothing should have been done to Richard. He should have been left alone. But um, 
I always wonder, you know, if he might have risked his health just for the sake of going down there to satisfy a growing addiction. And I that's I want to leave it at that because I, I want to keep my channel clean. Um, I, I just can't imagine, I just can't imagine an issue like that. that. You know, for people who have that going on, it must be very hard. And my heart goes out to people trying to overcome things like that. But bear in mind, guys, I knew nothing about this. I didn't know what was wrong. I was still reacting in a very babyish way that he did this, he did that, and I'm not going to forgive him. And I didn't understand the signs. I, I really think it was that, guys. And, you know, I think that the night before I lost my top, he probably did something. And it affected him because he was behaving wacky. I don't understand it. So, um... I really do firmly believe that my father's associates down there caught on. They must have caught on. And I really shudder to think of what they must have thought of me. Or maybe they were not, you know, what must they, they I, I can't even describe it. There's no way that I would have ever tried anything like that. But I wonder what they suspected of me. I wonder what they thought of me, you know. I, nobody ever said anything to me. So I don't know. To this day, I don't know. And now, uh, he is, Richard is no longer with us, so I can't even go and ask him. But it took me years. I mean, how many years has it been? Two decades? To get to the point where I firmly believe that something like that was wrong. And so... Um, I never suspected a thing, guys. All these decades after, and I'm just picking up on it now because I'm looking at him in a different way. And so um, when we did speak later, Richard relayed that he bought shoes before the airport and he was deadly sick. And, you know, little did I know that I would suffer similar, not the same, I didn't fall asleep in public, similar circumstances years later. Um, before my mom and I gave up our beach house. And so, um, but for tonight, I'm just going to stick with this one story. And um, what he told me was that um, an ambulance was waiting for Richard when he deboarded the plane and uh, arrived back in Canada. And uh, he went to emergency and the doctors apparently told him that it was food poisoning. If that's the truth, I don't know. It probably is a very good, you know, I, um, reason. I, I think it's a very plausible reason for his illness, or maybe at least part of it. But I kind of wonder if there wasn't anything else that he may have overdone to put his system into shock. Because down there, guys, the, with the climate and the different types of food and maybe bacteria you can't you can't really you know go too carefully down there I find that if I don't eat I'm fine <laughs> um, if I try to eat and then do other things I can't do it I get sick I get sick so um, you know uh, I, I really do think that he risked his life to go away with me and I feel so guilty I've never felt guiltier and more responsible for the health of another adult than I did with him. Besides my mother, when she took sick during her final months of life, I, I remember being so guilty about it because you always think, if I had just done this and this, this person wouldn't be sick. But I, I you know, we can't do that, can we? You know, so um, I guess my, my uh, point is, that you should never travel unless you are 100%. And what I mean by that is 100% fit, 100% sure of your travel companions, and 100%, you know. And so if you have to miss out on a trip, don't worry about it. You just wait for the right time. Don't go away in a, in a very insecure or unfamiliar situation. 
um, a, a couple of times I did that and it like this one I, it's not comfortable guys you know better to stay home or go by yourself or go see grandma just don't do it guys if you need a break take a break don't put yourself in that position because you know little by little my friend Richard destroyed his health to the point that he passed away a lot sooner than he might have otherwise. So uh, I, I don't know the details, all the details of his um, illness in the end, but I do know that he was strongly addicted to things that he should never have gone near. And so um, I, you know, I hope that you enjoyed the story time. Um, I'm a mess, I'm tired, <laughs> and I've been out all day because I wanted to enjoy this beautiful, sunshiny day. And um, I thank you so much for listening and watching, and uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.